I understand that there's a lot of different things that we could be doing currently. I could be playing Elden Ring. That would be a joy. We could be spending time with our families. We could be doing things that give us enjoyment. But that's not what we're going to do. Because I'm feeling a little bit masochistic. We are going to watch Tulsi Gabbard's CPAC speech. Now, I haven't seen anything from this, so I have no idea what to expect. I think that I saw part of a quote of what she said online, and it was incredibly stupid. Oh, no, no, there was actually a clip. I didn't watch it, but I saw the quote from it. It was something about God. I mean, she's very clearly trying to pander to evangelicals, but I'm very interested to see what she says. I think it's pretty obvious that she's going to run for president as a Republican in a couple of years. I mean, she ran as a Democrat, and that was catastrophic because we all saw through her bullshit, and she got like, uh, what was it? Two delegates, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's see what she had to say here at uh, at the Conservative Political Action Conference. Aloha. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so much, Larry. Uh, and thanks, Matt and Mercy. And just thanks all of you for your kind and warm welcome. You are making me feel right at home. Oh, you are right at home. <laughs> uh, you know, I gotta say, when Matt and I first spoke on the phone about my coming here, we both had a similar reaction to each other, saying, yeah, there's gonna probably be some strong thoughts that people were gonna share with both of us. Not really. Not very surprised, Tulsi. <laughs> when they find out that I'm coming here, and, and we both kind of, I imagine you were nodding, Matt. I was nodding, but we're like, you know what, bring it on. And, uh, and they brought it on. <laughs> So we were to know that on <laughs> she's so media, fake. The blue check marks started lighting up, and you know, I kind of started to. See the blue check marks. Aren't you a blue check mark? Are you not verified on Twitter? So you're part of the blue check mark. So shut the fuck up. She's so fake. Holy coming shit. The so-called progressives. The usual things coming out. The so-called progressives. They're so fake. They support Medicare for all. Unlike me. Oh, wait, wait, what, what? Motherfucker, you're the one who's not progressive. You literally moved away from Medicare for all. Your entire campaign in 2020 imploded because people saw right through you that you were a phony. And now you've gone full mask off. Even your whole anti-war shtick has become undone. Remember when uh, Tucker Carlson threw her a softball and tried to get her to attack Biden for droning a family in Afghanistan? And she was talking about how drones are good, actually. So as long as these Islamist jihadists are waging war against us, we have to work to defeat them militarily and ideologically. And militarily, we have two choices in how we do that. Number one, we can continue to invade and occupy and nation build in countries around the world, just as we did in Afghanistan at great cost. Number two, we can take a targeted approach using airstrikes, using our special forces to go in and go after these terrorist cells. Tulsi Gabbard is going to CPAC. She's a traitor. Hillary was right. Get her out of here. And then I started to see the things coming out from so-called conservatives, mostly directed at Matt, saying, how dare you? <laughs> Don't you know she's a Democrat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm above the fray, you see. The left doesn't like me being here, and the right doesn't like me being here. These so-called progressives and so-called conservatives, you know, I'm not like them. I'm above the fray here. My platitudes are different. My platitudes are better. And guess what? I was a veteran. Did I mention that I'm a veteran, folks? I'm a veteran and aloha. Disinvite her. Lock the doors. Don't let her in. Who was saying that? Well, these things can be easy to laugh about sometimes. Unfortunately, this kind of reaction, this kind of tribalism is not limited to social media. It is something that's happening far too often and far too common across our country, where one section of our country sticks to our own tribe. We only hang out with and listen to and talk to people who we agree with, and we turn our backs and reject anyone who is not part of that tribe. But this kind of tribe- Perhaps hyperpolarization and tribalization in American politics might have something to do with the fact that our late stage capitalist society is dying and so you have people who are actually proposing solutions and then another set of people who are saying we shouldn't do anything. In fact, we should be more late stage capitalists. And perhaps these disagreements are actually meaningful. And one side is getting more extreme. The Republicans are basically openly associating with white nationalists. You have uh, Marjorie Greene speaking at AFPAC with Nick Fuentes, who's open about the fact that he's a white nationalist. They're anti-vax. So I'm sorry if that makes me tribalistic to not want to associate with Republicans who 
want to make our late stage capitalist dystopian hellscape even more dystopian than it already is if that makes me a tribalist then so be it i don't want to be associated with them and they're not my tribe so that's not a bad thing we'll come together when they stop being fucking insane but so long as that doesn't happen then there will not be unity it's dangerous and it's emblematic of an erosion of a spiritual foundation in this a spiritual foundation what what's that spiritual foundation tells you it's emblematic of this lack of recognition that we're all god's children god's not real god is not real i do not believe in your god that we are one nation under god no we're not separation of church and state motherfucker deal with it if you don't like the constitution then i don't know what to tell you but we have the separation of church and state so uh fuck your religion fuck your god i reject it knowing that inspires look at oh she's gonna thumb point she's she knows we're gonna make fun of her if she thumb points so she's trying to do this she's trying to hold it in but she really wants the thumb point inspires us to look within and find that fundamental respect and care that we should have for one another and so when I came out here, I said aloha because this is what aloha really means. Aloha means hello and goodbye in Hawaiian. That's what it means. Everyone's heard the word aloha. Most people think it means hello and goodbye. But it literally means that. You could try to uh, ascribe more value to it, but that's quite literally what it means. My family, 90% of my family is from Hawaii. Um, if you ask them what aloha means, they tell you hello, goodbye. That's what it means. There's a reason why we greet each other with aloha. And it's because of the deeper meaning there where it says... I recognize that we are all children of God, and I come... That's what it means, really. Uh, is there any Hawaiians in the chat that can confirm this? When you say aloha to somebody in Hawaii, does that mean, hi, child of God there, it's nice to meet you? I don't think that many people are going to agree with that, Tulsi. I, I, maybe it's just me. Maybe I don't know, right? We say we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Oh, she's she's just going to go for this truth. <laughs> she's going she's gonna to cite the whole declaration. <laughs> she, she, I swear to God, she is gonna thumb point at some point during this fucking speech because she, she's just it's it's setting up to do all men are create created equal. She's gonna do it. I swear to God. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit. Of oh, she's a life, liberty, pursuit. She's hitting every fucking platitude. Holy shit. Our freedom comes from God. Not no, it does not. Our freedom comes from the Constitution of the United States because that's the regime that we live under. What evidence do you have that we get freedom from God? I mean, what does that even mean? Freedom comes from God. I don't believe in your God. So do I not get freedom? I just don't understand it. She's so dumb. And she's very clearly pandering. See, that's the thing. If I'm an evangelical and you see this Democrat who's all of a sudden pandering to me, wouldn't you feel as if that's patronizing? As if she's trying to insult your intelligence? And, you know, wouldn't you be offended that she thinks that you wouldn't see through this? Probably not because conservatives will just gobble it all up. Uh, my freedom does not come from God. Okay. God is not real. I don't believe in God or your superstitions. You can say uh, freedom comes from the Easter bunny or freedom comes from a turd on the ground and it would be as meaningful, as factual, literally, as saying your freedom comes from God. So this is nothing more than virtue signaling to the evangelicals that she's going to try to court in her 2024 run as a Republican. And we all, you hear a lot from Glenn tonight about the First Amendment, about free speech, about the Bill of Rights. Uh, by the way, before she says anything about uh, freedom of speech, guess what? When she was a member of Congress, she voted against freedom of speech. She voted to condemn BDS. As a lawmaker, she voted to condemn BDS. And yet she's talking about freedom of speech. You're a fraud, Tulsi Gabbard. You don't give a flying fuck about freedom of speech. You only support freedom of speech in so far as you agree with it but if you truly believed in freedom of speech well if you don't agree with uh, bds you should still in theory stand up for it but as a lawmaker you voted for apex resolution to condemn bds so go fuck yourself with this virtue signaling about freedom of speech you are a fraud and this is why you lost in 2020 because we saw right through your bullshit i don't know if republicans are going to be smart enough to see through it hopefully they won't be that naive to know that you're playing them and obviously patronizingly pandering to them, but we'll see. And as you well know, says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Or but you you just said we're all our freedom comes from God, but now you're saying that the Constitution prohibits the establishment of a religion. Well, which is it? The freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress. Is she is she just going to read the whole Constitution? We're going for the Declaration of Independence to the Constitution. She's just going to read the whole thing. Is, is that what she's doing? Grievances. 
this foundation of freedom is what makes us who we are as Americans. This foundation of freedom for me is deeply ingrained in who I am, both as a soldier. I'm a veteran, everyone. In case you didn't remember, I'm a veteran. FYI. Well, thank you for thanking me for my service. I am indeed a veteran. <laughs> as an American. That oath. That oath that I took to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Seems like you didn't want to defend uh, the First Amendment when you condemned BDS, siding with APAC. So, seems like you violated that oath. One that is seared into my heart. Now, I know we have many veterans here in the hall tonight, many who are watching from home, those of you who have worn or still wear the uniform. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know how serious we take this oath. And like the many great Americans that we've had the privilege of serving alongside, the great Americans who have come before us upon whose shoulders we stand, we are united in this unwavering commitment to freedom. We recognize that while we may disagree- We are united in this unwavering commitment to freedom. How? Name some policies. But you say we are willing to lay our lives down to defend your right to say it. That is freedom. Except BDS, of course. So as long as we're committed to this foundation of freedom that's enshrined in our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, we can recognize our differences and work together based on that common ground. Coming from that common foundation of freedom, we can overcome the great obstacles and challenges that we face. Like what? Name a policy. Does anyone notice that there isn't a single policy prescription yet? We can work together. We value freedom. We fight for freedom. But how? How are you going to specifically enhance freedoms? What things would you do? What policies would you prescribe? Not a single policy. This is all platitudes. And if you go back and watch any of her speeches in uh, the 2020 Democratic Party primary, a lot of it was platitudes, like the bulk of it. But now it's just all platitudes. It's all platitudes. They think free speech is something that should only be left to those who agree with them. Saying, hey, if you know what? If your speech offends me or if it offends anyone, then you should not be allowed to say it. Like BDS, which you're against. I mean, I'm going to bring it up every fucking time because it's so relevant here. She's such a hypocrite. She's such a hypocrite to talk tough as if she supports the First Amendment when she voted for APAC's resolution to condemn BDS. You don't care about freedom of speech. You don't care about standing up for speech that you disagree with as well because you proved it as a lawmaker. You had a position of power in the United States and you said, no, I'm not taking a stand with freedom of speech. I'm taking a stand with censors who wants to shut down BDS. That's who you are, Tulsi Gabbard. So you can talk about freedom and use these platitudes and thumb point, but you exposed yourself as a fucking fraud. So basically they're saying- that Who's they? They're gonna protect us from that which they claim is not true. Who's they? The media, the politicians? We must just blindly accept and follow as truth. That which the government or those in power tells us is true goes against the very essence of our Constitution and Bill of Rights. This was created as a resounding rejection of the reign of kings and churches and authorities. There's a reason the preamble of the Constitution begins with, we the people. There's a reason our Declaration of Independence says that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, derived- I swear to God, she's just going to cite the Constitution and Declaration of Independence throughout the entirety of this. Cause she's not original, she's so corny, she's so fake, she's so fucking predictable. Just powers from the consent of the governed. We're almost halfway in. We're 10 minutes in. Is there any substance at all? People in America don't support freedom of speech, but I support freedom of speech, even though I voted against BDS. I mean, I just... <laughs> what is the point of this? You said nothing. You could fart, and there would literally be as much substance in that fart as this speech. And I'm not saying that to meme. Like, I, I literally am unironically saying that what she's saying here is not substantive at all. She's said nothing of value, nothing meaningful. It's all hot air. As they appoint themselves as the sole authority and voice of truth. Who's doing that? Who specifically is doing that? Do you have one example? And is it just one side? She's probably implying that it's the Democrats, right? Well, what about the Republicans? They're doing the same thing. You're doing the same thing in this speech. You said that we get our freedom from God. That's a pretty authoritative statement. Right? Isn't the implication there that you are an authority uh, or you're speaking as if you have an authority or a monopoly on the truth? 
you know, what's what's not say that you're not doing the same fucking thing. There's no value here. This is a bad speech, just objectively speaking, because she's saying nothing. It's so uh, meaningless. So that way she can kind of pander to maybe any Democrats that still support her and maybe new Republicans as well. It's all so vanilla and milk toast because she's trying to cast the broadest net that she can. So when she inevitably runs as a Republican in uh, 2024, maybe she picks up some moderate Republicans and even some Democrats as well. So you can see exactly what she's trying to do here. They get to decide what is true and what is false. They get to decide what is information or misinformation. Who's they? Who's they? Democrats? Media? Who? Big tech? What's your solution then? It, once you name the people who are propagating this issue, what's the solution then? What policy prescriptions? We're going to nationalize big tech, regulate it as a public utility. There's no policies here. Do you understand how frustrating this is to me? So as somebody who just wants to hear about policies. I don't care about any anecdotes or personal stories. I just want to hear about policies. To hear her go almost 12 minutes in, halfway through her speech, and not list a single policy prescription, this is really everything that's wrong with politics, right? Like any corporate Democrat, she's just saying words that have no meaning. She's not actually saying, these are the issues... Here's how I'm going to fix them specifically. Now, perhaps she gets to the solutions policy-wise towards the end of the speech, but she's just regurgitating platitudes again. She's citing the fucking uh, Declaration of Independence and Constitution. Oh, okay, we could Google that. What are you going to do, though, as a politician? Holy shit. And they expect we, the people, to just blindly accept and follow. Who's, who's they? This is where we're at today. It is in direct opposition to the Constitution that the power elite is actively suppressing voices, opinions, and information that they don't like. Like BDS? Because that's what you did when you were in power. I'm going to remind her every fucking time. Because it's true. It's so true. You can't claim to be a supporter of freedom of speech when you voted to condemn BDS as a member of Congress. When you vote for AIPAC's resolution to condemn BDS. Any time she brings up freedom of speech, it is absolutely incumbent on somebody who knows better to throw that in her fucking face. Because she is a fraud. That those who dare to even question the authority are accused of spreading misinformation and are therefore targeted and smeared and canceled and silenced. How so? Are, are you talking about anti-vaccine misinformation? Because that's quite literally misinformation. What are you talking about? Notice how there's all these vague generalities, but she doesn't actually speak with any specificity whatsoever. Because if you were to press her, I'm sure she would have to admit, yeah, anti-vax misinformation, that's bad. That's getting people killed. That's bad. Okay, what do we do about it? Do we censor them? Do we not censor them? Do we better inform people? Perhaps this is a failure of institutions to not adequately educate people. What is, what's the takeaway here? You're a politician. So what's the policy prescription? Oh, well, they want us to do this. They want us to do that. They don't want you to do this. They want you to do that. Yeah, it's held to be says source. Where's, where's the source? There's nothing here. We've seen their playbook over and Who's over. they, Tulsi? They Who's they? Why? Because they know that their propaganda will not hold up to scrutiny. Who's they? Right. Do Republicans not do propaganda? Are you talking about Democrats? Who is they, Tulsi Gabbard? You appear on Fox News all the time. Are you saying that they're not doing propaganda? Because I assure you, they are absolutely doing propaganda. Who's they? Yeah, yeah Artillery says, just trust me, trust me, bro. Yeah, trust me, bro. <laughs> That's what she's doing here. It's so ridiculous. Who, who buys this? She's so fake. She's so fake. This is why she probably wants to run as a Republican. Because as a leftist, if you have any common sense whatsoever, then you're going to see through this. And we did see through this. There are a couple of rubes on the left who didn't see through this. And now they're basically Republicans like her. But you can easily see through this. The only people who she could dupe are people stupid enough to believe these platitudes. And that would be evangelicals, conservatives. Engage in debate on substance or even answer very simple questions about their policies. They instead immediately resort to smears and name calling. Who? But what's even more dangerous than this threat of being canceled is the federal government wielding its power and this might. This threat to of being canceled. Who's being canceled, Tulsi? I think the people who were actually canceled, like who are absolutely blacklisted from society and culturally uh, unacceptable. I think it's what, like Harvey Weinstein, people who genuinely deserve to be canceled. Who's actually canceled? Because uh, I heard that Dave Chappelle was canceled, but he has more specials from Netflix. I hear that uh, Louis C.K. was canceled. He's still getting shells, believe it or not. So who's actually canceled and how is this actually a threat? 
punish those who dare to question or disagree with them and their policies. In what way? Who's punishing? I'll give you one example. Okay. Wow! We are 13 minutes in, and she's finally going to give us a single example. That's amazing. It's so amazing. If you go on DHS.gov, you'll find Biden's Department of Homeland Security summarizes the three factors that led them to declare that we are in a heightened state of a domestic terrorism threat. The first of those three factors is, quote, the proliferation of false or misleading narratives, which sow discord or undermine public trust in U.S. government institutions. Fox News. I want to read that again because... You don't have to read it again. She's just trying to run out the clock. Or misleading narratives, which sow discord or undermine public trust in U.S. government institutions. Number one factor. If you replace the word U.S. government with the word church, we can see how those in power see themselves as the high priest in a secular theocracy. Secular theocracy. You started this speech by saying we get our freedom from God. So, <laughs> what are you talking about? This explains why they see those who disagree with them as heretics. Who's they? She's not saying anything. Who is they? Who sees them as heretics? I disagree with people who don't support Medicare for all. I don't see them as heretics, certainly. I disagree with people who think that vaccines are bad. I don't see them as heretics. I think they're stupid and misinformed, but I don't see them as heretics. Who's they? Yeah, that's a good point, Mr. Anderson says. She uses the abstract enemy they because everyone in that audience is imagining whoever their Republican mind blames the most for their troubles. That is exactly it, right? It's kind of why Donald Trump's Make America Great Again slogan was so good because you can kind of just fill in the blanks. I don't know what time period he wants to go back to when it was great, but, uh, you know, I have an idea in my head, so I'm just going to ascribe what I think he means by that to him. And then I'll support him based on that. It's actually brilliant political uh, marketing. But if you're smart, then it's not going to work on you. If you have two brain cells left to rub together, you know, it's not going to work on you. This doesn't work on smart people. This works on people who are simpletons and rubes and easily manipulated by politicians. So I'm going to ask you, join me in pausing for a second as we step into an alternate universe, one where our leaders actually took their oath of office to the Constitution seriously. One where they really cared about us and our security and our freedom. If we were living in this world, they would shut down secret FISA courts and stop three-letter agencies like the NSA, FBI, and CIA from illegally spying on Americans. That'd be great. There's, hey, there's a policy prescription where there's something, right? We're 17, almost 18 minutes in. We're 17.56. And she finally says something that we should do to enhance freedom. It shouldn't have taken this long, but at least she, she came here and I agree. They would denounce the Attorney General of the United States for his disgraceful attacks on American parents like those from Loudoun County and across the country who are concerned for their children's education. Okay, I, I, if you're going to talk about this, then you should also talk about the uh, disgusting attacks from the Texas Attorney General on uh, the parents with trans children who's trying to criminalize the existence of trans identities. But we all know that Tulsi Gabbard is a turf, so she doesn't care about that. It's just conservative parents and what they're concerned with. I got to say a quick hello to the parents here. I've had the privilege of spending some time with the amazing parents from across the country and parents defending education. Many of them have never been involved. What about the parents who are defending their trans children? Are you going to speak to them, Tulsi Gabbard? I know that you don't care about trans people since you're a turf, but are you going to speak about them? Do those parents matter at all? Are they... Uh, dealing with oppression and tyranny from a rogue government uh, in Texas that's not representing their interests? Probably not, right? Politics before, but now they are in the trenches, standing up and fighting for their kids. <laughs> fighting against boards of education and politicians who believe that parents don't have the right to raise their own children. Right. I think that parents should have the right to raise their own children. So if you are a parent with a trans child in Texas, would Tulsi Gabbard agree that you should be able to seek out gender-affirming care without the state investigating you as a child abuser? Is this TERF going to bring that up? Of course not, because she's a TERF. In this different world, our leaders would call James Clapper before a judge to answer for his lies to Congress about how the government's collecting information from all of our phone records. Sure, I I'm down with that. I'd also like to lock up Henry Kissinger, George W. Bush, Donald Trump, Barack Obama, any war criminal who killed people in the Middle East and North Africa. Anyone responsible for the Iraq war, the architects, I'm done with that, sure. 
That's something. And they would support the Durham investigation into Clinton corruption in 2016 and beyond and make sure that those responsible are held accountable. The Durham investigation, to my understanding, is a bullshit manufactured story by the right. So, of course, she's going to uh, play into that and pander to them. Not surprising. But this isn't the world we live in. They're not going to do this. But that's it, though? That's all? Because I could say a lot more things of an alternate world that would be so much better, where workers actually own the means of production, where we all had health care, free education. But she cites basically ending domestic surveillance programs and putting James Clapper on trial. Okay, I agree with that, but that's it? That's the alternate world? I mean, if we're using our imaginations, are we not more creative to envision more? Healthcare? I mean, I just feel like there's so much more that you could say. Uh, and, and that's it. She, I guess she doesn't dream big. Maybe she's not as uh, imaginative as, as us. I don't know. Going down and they're cracking down. This power elite operation to crush freedom of speech is the enemy attack from within. Yeah. And you did that when you were in Congress. You voted with APAC to condemn BDS. Shame on you. You're against freedom of speech. How can we vote, let's say, to choose a president when we do not have the freedom to actively participate in the marketplace of ideas? I'm sorry, what? We do not have the ability to participate freely in the marketplace of ideas. Don't you think we have more of an ability to participate in the marketplace of ideas than to choose our own president? I mean, it wasn't that long ago when we all voted for somebody and the Electoral College said, no, the other person with less votes wins. Remember that? Hillary Clinton got more votes than Donald Trump, and because of the Electoral College, and not just the Electoral College, because of gerrymandering, voter suppression across the country, you have lesser of a say. But she's honestly saying, unironically, that you have less of a say in participating in the marketplace of ideas than you do in choosing a president. I don't think she's dumb, actually. What she's saying is very stupid, but she's she's playing to the crowd, right? She She's... She's speaking to a specific audience, people who she wants to be her future supporters in her 2024 presidential run as a Republican. Freedom to share our opinions, to listen to other perspectives. To we have that freedom. We can share our opinions. Tulsi Gabbard is sharing her opinion right now. What freedom is being restricted? You're speaking on a fucking stage about how freedom of speech is under attack. I mean, sure, there are elements of freedom of speech under attack, but the elements that she doesn't want to talk about, that she was attacking when she was a member of Congress. We can't do this as long as we live in a society that's filled with intimidation and fear of being targeted, of being canceled, being intimidated into self-censoring just because we don't want to lose our jobs so that we can provide for our families. Who's who's afraid? What are you so afraid of, Tulsi? Say what you want. I say what I want. I, I just, I don't know what the fear is. Who's afraid that they're going to be canceled? Who gives a shit? Say what the fuck you want. Nobody's stopping you. You're on a stage. You have the microphone. You have the podium. Say what you want. Who's afraid? Nobody's afraid. We can say what the fuck we want. She's really talking about, oh, well, I want to be able to go on Twitter and say things without getting banned. I want to violate TOS. And I, I don't even know. Like, the Republican uh, thing with social media is they pretend as if they're being silenced by social media but if you look at the daily totals for facebook and, and all these social media sites i mean it's always daily wire daily wire ben shapiro dan bongino dan bongino i mean conservatives are dominating social media so even their complaint is bullshit they want to protect us people from being exposed to misinformation which really reveals how they actually feel about us how little they respect the american people but there is an effort to misinform people at the behest of corporate America. There's a reason why people think that tax cuts um, for the wealthy are good because they think that, oh, I'm getting a tax cut. No, they think that, oh, well, I'm going to be a billionaire someday. So why would I want to cut billionaire taxes? No, you're never going to be a billionaire. Not going to happen. So propaganda is the tool of the capitalists in this capitalist system. Do you want to get rid of capitalism, Tulsi? I don't think you do, right? And what they're saying is, you know what? You're too stupid to think for yourself. I mean, let's face it. A lot of Americans are. A lot of Americans are. Not all of them. Um, but a lot of them are, are very, very fucking stupid. Sorry, but it's true. If you don't believe me, talk to my uncle. Talk to my uncle, who is a conservative, 
who will tell you that Nancy Pelosi is a literal demon and the vaccines are going to murder everyone in the span of a couple of years. Humans will cease to exist. Talk to people like that and then tell me if you don't think that Americans are stupid. Not all of them, but a lot of Americans are fucking stupid. Undeniable fact. Undeniable fact. Talk to people in this crowded seat back if you don't believe me, Tulsi. Discern for yourself to make your own decision so big government knows better for you than you do for yourself. Oh, there we go. There's the conservative trope we were leading up to. There we go. Big government bad. That's why I no longer support Medicare for all. Is that it, Tulsi? Is that it? So in lieu of big government, what? Freedom or corporate America ruling our lives? I just want to know overall, what is the core ideology driving this rhetoric? Because it's all empty. It's platitudes. It's virtue signaling to evangelicals and conservatives. Big government bad. But what exactly is the uh, policy prescription? She talked about... Uh, you know, getting rid of domestic surveillance. I'm all on board. Excellent. That sounds wonderful. Putting James Clapper on trial. Okay. Deal. If you add Henry Kissinger, Donald Trump, Dick Cheney, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, all these war criminals to the list too. Okay, great. But is that it? I mean, what is your vision for society? Now that you're not progressive anymore, what is it? What do you want to do to improve our lives? You talk about freedom, but you don't really say how you'll improve our lives and enhance freedom in the United States, except for saying, well, we should end domestic spying. Well, yeah, we, I agree with that. What else? Is that it? We just, we just out of ideas after that. This is authoritarianism. Yeah, I agree. This is authoritarianism. Go live in an authoritarian regime and then you'll, you'll know what authoritarianism is. If we were living in an authoritarian regime, you wouldn't be able to take this stage and criticize the government, Tulsi Gabbard. This is authoritarianism. It is not freedom. It is not a democratic republic. And by rejecting our Bill of Rights, they have rejected our Constitution and therefore are the greatest threat to our republic. Who's they? How? And therein lies the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy? She talked about freedom of speech when she voted with IPAC to condemn BDS. I'm going to bring that up every motherfucking time. I don't care how redundant it is because she's such a phony. Neocon, neolib establishment foreign policy neocon neolib but you supported a neoliberal version of healthcare you ran on medicare for all and then you said you know what actually i want single payer plus which means we have a system that people get healthcare but then there's also this private insurance system do you want to know what any private solution to a public problem is referred to as Tulsi Gabbard, that's called neoliberalism. When I talk about policies, do you ever hear me bring up a private solution to a public problem? No, because I'm not a neoliberal. She quite literally supported at least one neoliberal policy, and yet she's saying, oh, I'm against neocons and neolibs. You just supported drones on Tucker Carlson's program, so that's pretty neoconservative. Illegally droning these countries where we're killing civilians who didn't attack us. She's actually to the right of Biden when it comes to drones. Biden has reined in drones. Tulsi says drones are good, actually. That's what she said. It's a bit of an oversimplification, but she endorsed the use of drones, which is a grave violation of human rights and territorial integrity and sovereignty of these countries like Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia. So if anyone is a neo-lib and a neocon, it's Tulsi Gabbard. Of misusing our military men and women by sending them out to be the policemen of the world overthrowing dictators we don't like while turning a blind eye to the ones that we do all in the name of spreading democracy and defeating autocracy yeah i i think that being the world's police is indeed bad war is bad but don't you think that using drones in countries is a kind of a policing thing to do don't you think it's within that realm at least because on tucker carlson's show you didn't do that you didn't condemn that but they're hypocrites. They proclaim you're a hypocrite. We must go to war to spread democracy and freedom while they actively work to undermine our democratic republic and our freedoms right here at home. True. That's bad. I am against those neocons. But you're not because you are agreeing with the military industrial complex that drones are good. And I don't agree with you there. That's bad. And they use crises, emergencies, times of war, whether it's a cold war or a hot war, to embolden the security state and infringe on our liberties and rights. We saw it with the Patriot Act. We saw it with COVID. We're seeing it happening now in the name of democracy. As again, our How do we see it with COVID? We did jack shit 
to stop COVID. We locked down for like two weeks, barely. Give me a fucking break. It works to, with big tech to censor misinformation about what's going on with Russia's war with Ukraine. Once our rights are taken away, the government does not willingly give them back. So what do we do? Each of us in our own way and together must take a stand to protect our freedoms and rights. Make our voices heard. Hold our leaders accountable. Hold them accountable when they vote with APAC to condemn BDS specifically. That's what we should do. People like Tulsi Gabbard. But as we look forward, we can take heart in knowing that our path will be lit by the fire of freedom that burns brightly in the hearts of Americans in every community. That's a beautiful platitude. I love it. Every home, every church, every classroom all across this country in small towns and in big cities where we have decided that we belong to no one but God. We are not... <sighs> I love Jesus, don't you, evangelicals? I too love God, fellow evangelicals. Vote for me in 2024. Subjects or slaves of those who govern. And by God's grace, we are free. And we will wow. to remain free. Thank Beautiful. you so much for having me here today. May God bless you. May God bless America. Aloha. Thank you. That honestly made me want to kill myself in Roblox.